The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we sing our hymn of praise. O oh God, judge eternal, you love justice and hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets, to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back to those who prophesy lies? and who prophesied the deceit of their own heart. They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams, and they tell one another, just as the ancestors forgot my name, forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks rock in pieces? Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. The second reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, <clears throat> administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, and became mighty in war, put foreign enemies to flight. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, 
and let us run with a perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Holy words, holy wisdom. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. We're having you stand for this hearing because out of respect and love for Jesus um, and his words. Although we might need to uh, want to sit down and put a seatbelt on and a, and, a, and a crash helmet on for this one. Um, because you're going to hear some words of Jesus that might come as a complete surprise to you. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west and you say it's going to rain and so it happens, and when you see a In the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens, you stage actors. That's what the word hypocrites mean. You're pretending to be somebody that you're not. You stage actors. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time, Jesus says. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, first, allow me to tell you that I do not pick out the scripture readings for Sunday morning. We follow something called the lectionary, and these lessons are served up to us as if we are um, children, and a plate of food is put in front of us from a loving parent. If a pastor were to pick their own scripture preferences, they would pick from the portions that they prefer. One pastor might prefer to preach every Sunday from the end times. Another pastor might prefer to preach every Sunday on having Jesus say, let the children come to me. There's lots of different ways to be a follower of Jesus. And the way that we do it here is to follow the lectionary, which is to eat the meal that is placed before you by a loving parent whether you like the food or not. Second, allow me to tell you that Jesus is not one-dimensional. Jesus is a product of his generation. His words and actions were lived out in a specific time in history. Just like your life cannot be told without the wider picture and context in which it happens around you, so too is it true for Jesus. And third, allow me to tell you that this gospel reading that comes to us from the lectionary, at first glance may seem that it's about Jesus that we do not recognize, an unfamiliar Jesus. But look again, and that's what the word respect means. Respect means to look again. Spec meaning to see or to look. Re, meaning to have repeated action. Respect is to look again. So look again, and together we will see a fuller picture of who Jesus is, and that he is not a one-note Messiah. So grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. And what we heard is that Jesus said, uh, do not think that I have come to bring peace, but division. These are the words that we might not expect to come out of the mouth of the one who we proclaim to be the Prince of Peace. And so it deserves a second look. It appears to me that what Jesus is saying here is what he's saying is, by my very presence, I am going to shake things up. This is not going to be a big group hug experience. This is going to get complicated. And some will be for me and my ways, and some will be against me and my ways. Jesus said, this does not mean that I will back away from who I am. This does not mean that I will back away from what I am about. Jesus says, I am who I am. And it will bring fire. And it will bring division. And that sometimes fire and division will even land on the most primal of human relationships, our family. And it's going to get complicated. But Jesus is not going to back away from who he is just to have maintain some peace and quiet in the home. In another gospel story, in the gospel of Mark, the family of Jesus come out to him, and this is my loose translation. A loose translation. Don was married. No, Don, Don was a college student to uh, Eugene Peterson, who has a loose translation of, of the, the Bible. It's called The, Me- the Message. Uh, this is my loose translation of what his family said. They said his brothers came to him. Some interpret that as, as followers of Jesus, as his brothers. Uh, others see it more as more biological his biological brothers. I I like the the biological reading. His brothers came up to him and said, enough already, it's time for you to come home. People are saying that you are out of your mind, and that's a direct translation. Mom says you're embarrassing the family. Enough already, come home. To which Jesus says, who is my mother and my brothers and my sisters? but the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. In short, Jesus is a man of principle. He has backbone. His identity as Messiah is not going to wash away. People who might otherwise completely agree with Jesus are going to have reason to disagree, and he knows this. It's just the way things are. His presence will be divisive. For Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. He also says, I am the gate. He also says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Jesus says, I, period, am, period. Jesus says, I define you. You do not define me. And in a preacher's imagination, I see Jesus saying, I am the gable. Well, I found out at the end of the first service that my construction metaphors don't really make sense. Because I thought this line up here was called gable. It is not. This is called a ridge. The gable is up there. Nonetheless, I have Jesus say, I am the gable. The gable is part of the ridge, or part of the roof line, but this is, this here's a, actually the ridge kind of makes more sense with what you'll see in a moment. Um, on the cover of your bulletin, it's the, um, the picture of the House of Seven Gables in Salem, Massachusetts, a story written by Nathaniel Hawthorne, a um, story about generational anguish, um, guilt, and shame that comes to the point of resolution and redemption. Imagine, well, the, 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 the ridge 
is like the steepest angle. It's not underneath the roof, but imagine on the top of this roof here. Then imagine two raindrops falling from the sky. Okay, I'm going to ask you to imagine something, but stay with me here. Imagine that those two raindrops are from the same raindrop family. They love one another. They have two different names. They're from the same family. These raindrops are kin. Together they lived in the same cloud. And then they fell from the sky at the same time. And they fell side by side. And when they land, they land only inches apart. One raindrop falls on one side of the ridge. The other raindrop falls on the other side of the ridge. Each raindrop rolls differently into opposite gutters. The presence of the ridge brings division to the family relationships. And the ridge is not apologizing for what the ridge does. Jesus knows that his very presence will be divisive. In families in his lifetime, there would have been some who were drawn to Jesus and others who wanted to have nothing to do with it. And the family was also tight. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, I know that my being here is going to stir things things up, but I can't back away just to keep the peace. Jesus has backbone. Now, Jesus loves you, but he is not wishy-washy. And Jesus is always with you, but he will not always agree with you. All of us are broken, and all of us fall short of the glory of God. We mess things up, and sometimes we mess things up by wanting to make Jesus in our own image, to make him the Jesus we want him to be, so that he agrees with us, and he disagrees with the people that we don't like. But Jesus does not agree with everything that we say and do because Jesus is out to change and transform you and all creation. This is his mission. Jesus said, I, period, am, period. And some are going to love it and some are going to hate it. He's not foretelling the future when he says, I'm going to set father against son, mother against daughter. He is stating a fact. And it is a fact that is still with us today because religion, as we know, can be divisive. When I lived in Chicago, shortly out of seminary, there was a man who fell in love and married a woman in Thailand. And they were married in Thailand at a culturally... Um, Thai ceremony. The groom's mother was a member of my congregation and she wanted her son to get married in the States. A Chicago wedding, she said. That's how she called it. A Chicago wedding. And so they came to me, this young couple, and I met with them for premarital counseling even though they were already married. Somehow in the, religion, in the conversation, the topic of religion came up, and she was quite matter-of-fact that she would not change religions because of her husband, because, she said, if she did, her family back in Thailand would disown her, and she would not receive her inheritance. A family of raindrops fall on a roof, And sometimes saying to one another, don't you dare fall over there. Or the family that has a grown child that falls in love with someone that seeks to marry outside the blessing of the family. Is it not the story of Romeo and Juliet? And West Side Story? 
and so many others. And we laugh. Here in the space, there are so many that laugh at how once we heard about the great anguish of our ancestors where there was Norwegians that married Swedes. Or Lutherans that married Baptists. Or Protestants that married Catholics. And so to expand the metaphor... There is a ridgeline in the natural world, for there are ridgelines in the mountains. There's a ridgeline at the peak of the Cascade Mountains. Two raindrops fall side by side. One drop falls to the west. Another drop falls to the east. And families can be on the opposite sides of the same thing. And sometimes it's hard to be together. And sometimes there are times that we disagree, where we keep the quiet to keep the peace. But does not the raindrop that lands on the west eventually roll with other raindrops into rivers like the cedar? that flow into Lake Washington and then flow through the locks and into the Salish Sea and into the Pacific? And does not the raindrop that falls on the east side eventually fall into the Wenatchee or the Yakima and roll into the mighty Columbia and flows out into the same ocean? Is there not division in our days? There is fighting and disagreement in every generation. And in some generations, it seems the fighting gets worse. There are times when brothers go to war against brothers. And 150 years later, the resentments still fight in the battlefields of the soul. And there's father against son and brother against sister and in-laws against in-laws, and neighbor against neighbor. So when it comes to living side by side, we need to find the angels of our better natures to look again, to look again at the neighbor, to look again at the other, with our new eyes of respect, with malice toward none, and charity for all. And each of us to step out of our bubbles and echo chambers of our own making. For the moment that we draw a line, we will find Jesus standing with those on the other side. For the truth is a stubborn thing, said John Adams. The truth is a house in the rain. And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. So let's expand the metaphor even more. There is a ridge line in the Rocky Mountains. It is a crooked line that moves mostly north and south. It is called, is it not, the Continental Divide, capital C, capital D. Its intent is not to be divisive, but simply by being what it is, it is divisive. A raindrop that falls to the west of the Continental Divide, an inch from the ridge line, goes left. will follow to the west to the Snake River or to the Columbia or the Colorado and go into the Gulf of Mexico or flow to the Pacific. The Pacific, which as oceans go, is not very peaceful at all. At the same time, a raindrop falls to the east of the Continental Divide an inch from the gable and goes to the right and flows to the east, maybe in the Mississippi or 
or the Missouri to the Mississippi and to a different gulf onto the opposite side. But does not the whole of the oceans belong to God, the creator of all? And do not the photos of this globe from the moon paint our earth as a big blue ball, one ocean under God? Are we not more same than our differences? Out of many raindrops, we are one. There is a wideness in Christ's mercy like the wideness of the sea. We are more same than we are different. In the wide embrace of God in Christ Jesus, we are one. And it's complicated and complex, but we are one. And does not the beauty of science, which tells us the way things are, tell us also that the cycle then repeats itself in this endless cycle of water rising from the sea, being embraced by clouds only to fall again, rain falling on the just and unjust, raindrops falling wherever they may fall. And even though we are not told of this, I imagine Jesus. Not one-dimensional, but three. Standing out in the rain. I like to think that's what he did. Letting the rain fall on him. His arms wide like you did on the cross. Standing out in the rain, laughing, receiving, enjoying. Enjoying this moment that God has given in this endless cycle of every generation, learning how to be as God intended us to be from the beginning. And this time, though everything is different, look again, everything is still the same.
Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to, the holy, to him in holy prayer. The response is receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings and faith around the globe and bless the work of our ecumenical and interfaith partners. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination, ableist discrimination, and for all people discriminated against based on their gender identity or sexual orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Merciful God, we receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep, especially the Gertzen family. In our joy and in our tears, be near us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Are there other intercessions the people of God would like to offer at this point? For the beauty of creation, for the reach of the trees, for the calmness of a mountain lake, hear us, O God. Receive our prayer. Receive our prayer. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints, especially Maximilian Kolbe and Kash Mook, who have gone before us. May we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. And Anne, would you please come forward at this time? Our church is an ever-changing, growing community. And we welcome Anne to the community of Magnolia Lutheran Church. Why don't you stand right here and you can face me. Mm -hmm. We welcome you. Oh, you can face me. You can face me. So Good. You can face me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We welcome you. We have some joyful expectations of what it is to be part of the church triumphant here at Magnolia Lutheran Church, to worship regularly, to give joyfully, to, re, to serve faithfully, and to um, live with an, one another in community. Do you promise to grow into these joyful expectations? If so, please say, I do. I do. Let us pray. Thank you, God, that you have brought Anne to this community. May this community change because of her presence, her voice, her gifts that you have given us. May we seek not so much to assimilate her into a community that already exists, but to use us as ministers of your gospel. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to turn and introduce to you Dr. Ann Prouty. We welcome you. Um, Dr. Prouty is a doctor of um, uh, marriage and family therapy at Seattle Pacific University and teaches in the graduate program there, and we welcome you. How good to be The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We share God's peace with one another. God's peace.
Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Shake your hand. Some announcements to share with you. I'm limping a little bit today. There was a 10-mile hike to um, Lake Malakwa yesterday with uh, some of our uh, college-age uh, you know, men and women in our congregation. And uh, the last mile, my calf muscle just knotted up. And so, um, so I'm still limping, but it's still just so thrilled to spend that time with them. Uh, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, some of whom are in their 20s, and uh, they love the church. And so it's good to walk with you. A couple other announcements to let you know. Today at 12 o'clock noon, there will be a memorial service for Don Gertson. Thanks be to God for giving him to us to know and to love. And this is your invitation to be a part of that service. Uh, there is a coffee hour that's happening afterwards. The family has that ready for you. And this is a time for us to break bread and to live in community with one another. And so thank you to the family. We do uh, celebrate communion uh, every Sunday and celebrate communion this day. Uh, we receive communion by intinction, which is to dip the bread into the chalice. If that is a practice that um, makes you um, nervous for any reason that you so wish, know that you can receive the bread. The, the fullness of God, uh, fullness of Christ with us, does not come with um, the receiving of both kinds. That's actually in, in our forming documents. Uh, if you receive the bread, you, still, you don't receive 50% of Jesus. Uh, so... <laughs> There is an offering plate in the back of our church. We are not uh, spreading the offering plate through, through the church. There's an offering plate in the back. Also, an invitation for you to give online. Uh, there's uh, QR codes and also ways to find it to give online. And also, any sort of giving you might want to do through the U.S. mail or dropping anything off at the church office as well. Huh. Any other announcements that I'm missing at this time? High school youth going to the Mariners ball game in 10 days on uh, August 24th. Um, we're sitting right around uh, first base, and so t tickets are $15. We gather for the time with the table. Stan. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his ways of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth and creation, all creation, we, and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, gracious, and merciful. You are creator of heaven and earth, and everything, everywhere is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for the promise you gave to our ancestors, to Sarah and Abraham, that through their descendants you would bless the whole family on earth. We give thanks for the steadfast love you showed their offspring. You delivered them from captivity. You bound them to yourself to them in covenant. You sent them liberators and prophets, and you brought them home from exile. And when the time had fully come, you kept your promise 
by sending us Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice and peace. He was obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And we remember how on the night of his betrayal, he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his command that we love one another. Remember his, remembering his command of Christ with us, with us, with us at the table remembering his life, death, and resurrection, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Well. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Empower us by that same Spirit to love and to forgive, that our lives may anticipate that day when you will make all things new. Gather our prayers with those of the apostles and prophets, the martyrs and the faithful who have gone before us. Unite them with the unceasing prayer of the one who lives in us and in whom we live, Jesus Christ. Our Father, Please be seated and come forward at the usher's invitation. I'll take a mask.
So soon we break bread with one another. It's right down the hall, a little bit to your left. My hunch is that the Messiah will be in the room. I wonder how we are going to treat one another. I wonder if there will be a little bit more of a pause. Just wondering, is it you? How will we treat one another? Wondering if the Messiah might be the one with whom we're sharing a cup of coffee or a plate of cookies. Please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace because you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thank you.